Know the top stories of the day. Understand the issues that matter. This is Manila Bulletin News on Web. Your quick rundown of top news in the country and around the world. Manila Bulletin, celebrating 120 years of timely stories and timeless truths. Be fully informed. Hi, I'm Barbie Atienza. This is MB Now, and here are your news on web. The number of new coronavirus disease cases in Metro Manila continued to decrease as it averaged 829 cases per day during the June 9 to 15 period. This is according to the June 16 Okta Research Report. Okta pointed out that Metro Manila's seven-day average is down 13% from the previous week. The reproduction number in Metro Manila over the same period was 0.69. It noted that all local government units in Metro Manila are now classified as moderate risk to COVID-19 infections. Navotas registered the lowest average daily attack rate at 3.85 percent, while Pateros had the lowest average daily new cases with six cases during the same period. The government has dispelled allegations that it had neglected Mindanao in terms of responding to the pandemic, including the distribution of coronavirus vaccines. Presidential spokesman Harry Roque explained that the rise in cases of infections in some areas in Visayas and Mindanao was supposedly due to the public compliance or the low public compliance with health regulations, not government neglect. On allegations of inequitable distribution of vaccines in the country, Roque clarified that the National Capital Region Plus was initially given priority in vaccine access after recording high cases of coronavirus. Roque added that additional vaccine supplies were eventually distributed to other parts of the country as more supplies have arrived. Roque also insisted that the surge in coronavirus cases was not due to the scarcity of vaccine supply. Meanwhile, Vaccine czar Carlito Galvez Jr. promised on Wednesday, June 16, that he would allocate more vaccines against the COVID-19 in Mindanao after Deputy Speaker and Cagayan de Oro City Representative Rufus Rodriguez expressed frustration over the apparent lack of supply despite the surge of cases in the region over the past weeks. Galvez said high-risk areas in Mindanao, particularly those who are experiencing surges, will get more allocation once the vaccines are delivered delivered this month. While it supports the vaccination of students against the COVID-19 and the resumption of limited face-to-face -face classes in low-risk areas, the Department of Education will defer to the decision of the Interagency Task Force on Emerging Infectious Diseases and the Department of Health regarding these matters. During the Lagging Handa public briefing on Tuesday, June 15, Education Secretary Leonor Briones gave updates on the school opening for school year 2021-2022, as well as the preparations of the agency to ensure education continuity amid the pandemic. In particular, Brianna said that DepEd is closely coordinating with the IATF and the DOH on the recent developments related to COVID-19, such as possible vaccination of minors and reopening of schools for in-person classes. Briones said that DepEd will consult the DOH and the IATF with matters related to the school opening, particularly the possible resumption of face-to-face -face classes before submitting recommendations to the president. Citing initial studies, Briones noted that while children have strong resistance against COVID-19, they can be possible carriers of the virus. However, she noted that based on the studies released by the DOH and vaccine czar Carlito Galvez Jr., the Delta variant's behavior remains unpredictable. Here is a roundup of news in and around Metro Manila. Let's watch these reports. 
Marikina City can achieve herd immunity within 17 days or 3 weeks if there is a steady vaccine supply, according to Mayor Marcy Tudoro. In a region interview, Tudoro said around 100,000 individuals have been vaccinated in the city, which is more than half of its target population, 270,000. If the vaccine supply becomes steady, Tudoro said the city will maximize its vaccination rollout to inoculate 7,000 to 10,000 individuals a day. Currently, the city can inoculate around 3,000 to 3,500 per day, depending on the vaccine supply. The local government of Quezon City said Tuesday, thousands of residents have booked for COVID-19 job appointments, leaving all its vaccination slots already taken. In a Facebook post, it advised residents not to worry if they would not be able to book a vaccine appointment through its EZ Consult website. This came after 26,000 residents already booked their slots for the past 12 hours, the city's public information office said. The local government assured its residents that thousands of slots will become available starting June 16 until 20. Manila City will open its COVID-19 field hospital on June 24, coinciding with the city's 450th founding anniversary. The construction of field hospital located at the Rizal Park's Bornham Green was finished within 52 days. Manila Mayor Francisco Isco Moreno Dumagoso earlier said the facility was built to cater to mild and moderate COVID-19 cases, as well as to help create space in hospitals for non-COVID patients. Meanwhile, the Manila City government broke anew its daily vaccination record for the second straight day with 26,028 vaccines since administered on Tuesday. And now let's take a look at the latest news in other parts of the country and here are the details. A bypassed road that intends to cut travel time in a well-known municipality in Albay has been inaugurated. Department of Public Works and Highway Secretary Mark Villar on Tuesday, June 15, officially opened the 3.5-kilometer Kamalik Bypass Road that is expected to cut the usual 15-minute travel from Sulugan to Lubod to just 5 minutes. The Kamalik Bypass Road gives a clear and majestic view of the Mayon Volcano in the municipality of Kamalig and is expected to alleviate traffic congestion in the town's commercial district and facilitate better transport of goods and movement of rescue services. More than 63,000 doses of COVID-19 vaccines representing the 13th batch arrived in Zamboanga last Tuesday, June 15. The vaccines include 35,100 doses of Pfizer shots, the first batch of this type of vaccine to arrive in Zamboanga City. The Pfizer vaccines were immediately brought to the Zamboanga City Medical Center for storage in the ultra-low freezer facility. All Pfizer shots were given to Zamboanga due to the presence of storage facilities vital to the preservation of the vaccine doses. Anti-narcotics agents of the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency in the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao arrested five suspects including a woman during a drug buy-bust operation on Tuesday afternoon. The agents managed to secure several sachets of suspected shabu from one of the five suspects in Barangay Pingyaman at around 4 p.m. Arrested were Michael Ala Hamiron, the principal target of the operation, his wife Normia Kamsa Ala Salazar, Anton Vasquez Abo, Toby Sultan Gimablang, and Jomar Andong Liwa. The suspects are detained at the Pideya Detention Facility in Cotabato City and are facing charges for violation of the Public Act 9165 or the Comprehensive Dangerous Drugs Act of 2002. Here are the updates from around the world. Here is that report. Pharmaceutical giant AstraZeneca on Tuesday revealed it had hit a setback in trials of a treatment for COVID-19 symptoms. The drug made from a combination of two antibodies failed its main goal to treat symptoms in exposed patients, the company said in a statement. The treatment has been undergoing phase 3 or final stage clinical trials to assess its safety and efficacy. AstraZeneca said that 1,121 unvaccinated adults have been exposed to an infected person as part of a trial. The company is nevertheless continuing trials to assess whether the drug can prevent COVID or treat more severe symptoms. 
Thailand has begun to conduct a clinical test on its locally developed COVID-19 vaccine with humans, according to the medical professor from Chua Lalung Korn University. 72 volunteers aged between 18 and 75 years old have undergone the first phase of the clinical tests on the Chulakov-19 vaccine designed to build the human body's immunity to the coronavirus. The vaccine had been earlier tested with mice and macaquis and satisfactory results have been reported. It is finally proven as capable of inducing such immunity in humans. Its manufacturing in a quantitative volume for use with people might probably get started by the middle of next year. An international cruise ship carrying tourists docked Tuesday in Malaga, southern Spain, the first such arrival in more than a year, officials said. The liner has 1,200 German tourists on board and all had passed two obligatory COVID tests before embarking. There are also 764 crew on board. The vessel arrived from Gran Canaria in Spain's Canary Islands and is to sail later Tuesday to Mallorca in Balearic Island, according to the Port Authority. On June 7, Spain Transport Ministry lifted a ban on international cruise ships that had been imposed at the beginning of coronavirus pandemic in March 2020. And now for the latest in showbiz. Let's watch this. K-pop superstars and Grammy nominees BTS held an impressive online fan meeting which drew more than 1 million fans around the world. To celebrate their 8th anniversary since debuting in 2013, BTS held a two-day BTS 2021 Monster Sowuzu live stream fan meeting on June 13 and 14. The fan meeting was watched by a total of 1.33 million fans from 195 countries and regions across two days and is estimated to have earned at least 65.83 billion won or about $58.9 million. BTS performed 15 songs per day on an outdoor stage at the Seoul Olympic Stadium. The venue showcased planet installations and an entire stage in the shape of number 8, signifying the idol group's 8th anniversary and infinity sign. During the event, BTS also announced that the single CD of Butter will be released on July 9, the day when the name ARMY was created. The CD will include Butter and a new track. The pre-orders for the CD started on June 15. Here are the latest from Manila Bulletin Sports section. Let's watch these. A week after ruling the U.S. Women's Open Golf Championship, Yuka Sasa of the Philippines has moved up a spot higher in the Women's World Golf Rankings as she now occupies the 8th spot. Sasa, the first Filipina to win the prestigious and oldest major championship, was at number 9 when she ruled the U.S. Women's Open at Lake Course of the Olympic Club in San Francisco, California. However, as of June 14, Sasa's average points improved to 5.49 points to take the 8th spot, while South Korea's Hyo Ju Kim dropped to number 9 from number 8 with her 5.44 points. Meanwhile, ahead of her 20th birthday, Sasa got a special treat when she finally met her idol, Rory McIlroy. The meeting happened on Tuesday, June 15, as Sasa visited McIlroy during a practice round ahead of the 2021 U.S. Men's Open Championship at Torrey Pines Golf Course in San Diego, California. It was indeed a dream come true for Sasa to meet McIlroy, the Northern Ireland native to whom she patterned her game when she was 13 years old. At that time, she was starting to climb up the rankings as one of the top junior golfers in the Philippines. In today's Tech Talk, gadget today that can be used by doctors and patients while observing social distancing. Let's check out what this digital and wireless stethoscope is really all about. Let's watch this. The beat of your heart does more than just tell you how you feel. It also tells you the current state of your body. In this episode of Tech Talk, we will be checking out a device that works as a wireless stethoscope perfect for social distancing. This macaron-like device called Stemoscope is an ingenious device that can help doctors and their patients while on virtual consultation. It can also listen to your lungs, helps out in getting your blood pressure, and can also be used for your pets. Its accompanying smartphone application works as your central control where you can adjust the frequency of the stemoscope so that you can hear your heart clearly. 
Apart from that, it can also record the heartbeat so that you can send it to your doctor for analysis. Or you can set up a live stream within the app so that you can talk to your doctor in real time. This little white device comes with its own micro USB cable for charging. A single charge gives you about 5 hours of continuous use so you won't have to worry about running out of battery. It also has about 2 meters of working distance thanks to its Bluetooth connectivity. With health protocols still being enforced in the country, devices such as the stemoscope gives doctors and patients access to procedures that is somewhat impossible to perform due to the threat of the pandemic. And that is Tech Talk for this week. Join us again next week for more tech updates. Be fully informed. Oh wow, I'm sure medical professionals are excited to use the stemoscope in taking care of their patients. And those are the news on web today. June 16, 2021. For more news and details, get your copy of the Manila Bulletin newspaper tomorrow or you can log on to www.mb.com.ph. You may also subscribe to our newsletter through the link on this video's caption to have the day's latest news delivered to your inbox. I am Barbie Atienza for Manila Bulletin. Join us again tomorrow. This has been MB Now. Be fully informed.